Father, we ask for your spirit to be here and for each of us to be aware of your spirit in us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please put away everything except the right. We'll all start with the quiz today. No, you can go. The attendance sheet is coming around. Please make sure that you find the attendance sheet. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I I'm <laughs> 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 should recognize number two. Who recognizes number two? Who has seen number two? Okay. Did I purchase this one? He's one.
quiz is designed to get your quiz grade up. It should be, it should be easy. that I say, I know I've never read this before. When I know good and well that I've read through the Bible numerous times, I, I still, each time, something comes out, and I thought before, the last time I read it, before thinking something or hearing something new, I kind of thought something that was just sort of, just narrowed it, you know, just filler, or it's just parts of speech or whatever, now I'll jump out and I realize that might even have been what that passage was actually about. Um, so it, it uh, resolves differently each time. That's, it's even more true than when you re-watch your favorite movie. Do you have a favorite movie that you, that you like to re-watch? Um, and each time you notice something just a little bit different. Um, my, my whole family has, um, for years now, had an affinity for Bill and Ted's excellent adventure, Bill and Ted's bogus journey. Um, heard of the Keanu Reeves movies, George Carlin was, was in there, in both of them too. 
But um, on the surface, they're insipid, they're, they're foolishness. Um, but it's in layers, deep themes for esoteric philosophy and theology um, and physics are built in brilliantly into those movies. And so when you watch it the first time, you think it's just a rock. But it's, um, it's got depth that keeps you resolving. <coughs> Nothing so like scripture. Scripture continues to have more facets, like a diamond that you shine to put kind of light on each time. Um, at the beginning of Hebrews chapter 3, there's a part that, even in translation, it gets translated as if it's just sort of window dressing, just um, a modifier. But it's definitely not. And, and it's clearer in, in the Greek. It, 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 you can see that something that gets glossed over and read right past, and, and actually written right past in most English translations, almost all English translations, um, including the one that we have in hand, the, the, the uh, economy, new revised standard version that she has in hand. Um, it simply starts by that chapter by glossing right over something that matters a lot. It appears to just be a salutation. And it's not even emphasized at all. That's the notion that the, the reader to whom Hebrews, readers to whom Hebrews was written, we're holy. We're actually holy people. I think it says, my holy brethren or brothers. Um, it's not just like saying, um, dear Mike. It's not just saying, greetings, fine sir. The point there that we can take from that is that people that are um, that are on the path are actually holy. When we think of something that's holy, what do we think of? What do you think of when you think of a holy thing? I didn't hear either. Something that's pure. Something that's pure. Okay, purity. Um, the Sabbath is pure. The Sabbath. It's something about it that's holy. Does the sun look any different on Sabbath? Is there error in it? Is there any astronomy or astrology about the Sabbath? What makes it holy then? Reverence. Okay, when you think of holiness, you think of reverence. There's a certain amount of reverence associated with something that's holy. Yes. Being one with God. Being one with God. Reverence brings to mind the lack of separation from God. Very good to be set apart. And doesn't that fit with what she said about a holy day? Something really different. It's not a different color of sunshine. You can go and do things. Your car starts the same way. Your clothes feel the same. But it's a day that was taken and set aside to be special. Um, to go off that, you also do it perspective. Because it's a personal experience to see it and how it works. Say more about that. Um, so I was just like, when you asked the question, what I was thinking. Um, I saw it kind of as like beauty. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people like you can think one person or something is beautiful and other person can think differently. Oh, very good. So that's what the perspective oh, okay. comes in. If you are in that place in your heart, then the Sabbath for us, uh -huh. Sabbath is this whole idea of beauty. Mm -hmm. Very good. She, she draws the comparison between holiness and beauty. So what's holy for one person 
might not be holy for another, or might be holy in a different way, different kind of holiness. Think about some holy sites, geographical sites, that are holy to more than one religion, and they have a different kind of role. Um, in Jerusalem, um, there's, a, there's a particular place that means one thing to the Jews, and another thing to the uh, Muslims. Well, I, I think it's, um, it's something that each of us, like everyone in the world around stuff, we respect the person that's in them or who or is them. So I think that holiness is really um, respect. Or sometimes we need notice, or sometimes that we should give out of our own energy. So I think holiness is respect. So holiness is associated with respect. Um, if something is holy, then whatever it means to revere it, um, to respect it and that it has its arguments and their rights. Like, everyone's holy. So we give it a different kind of respect than we would if it wasn't holy, whatever the thing is, or the person. Yeah, if it's like, you know, um, the untouchables or uh, the purity code or something. Okay, very <clears throat> good. Yes. I think we should be holy like he is holy. We should be holy like he is holy. He was in the world, but he wasn't on this world. Okay. He, um, he was here, but he wasn't buying in. He was here, but he didn't share the construct that the rest, most of the rest of the world shares. And he said his followers would be in that situation. Now, interesting, the guy that was executed on the cross next to him, did not follow him. Never followed him. Going to be saved. Not going to go to hell. Going to go to heaven. We're going to be able to find out his biography later on when we're in heaven. Um, millions of people, I think, they don't really follow Jesus today. But that doesn't mean they're all going to hell. You notice that quiz question where I emphasized the being damned and going to hell? Um, it's false that if you don't walk with God like Enoch, that you're going to go to hell. That's false. There's going to be people who never heard of Jesus that are going to go to heaven. That's what Ellen White says. Um, and I believe that's the case. I don't think God is glad for a chance to damn just one more. I think that God is in the business of saving, not in the business of damning. Damning is where God 